Only one thing matters. Only one thing matters. Only one thing matters to the Lord. Only one thing matters. Only one thing matters. Mary has chosen it. Hallelujah. Only one thing matters. Only one thing matters. Only one thing matters to the Lord. Only one thing matters. Only one thing matters. Mary has chosen it. So the Gospel of Luke chapter 10 verse 38 to 42 presents us with the story of two sisters, Martha and Mary. Martha happens to be an active member of that family. Martha happens to be if you use the word busybody, because every family we must have some people who are busybodies, people who are always working, 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 jackies. Okay? We always have, we may use the word lazy. They call them lazy. Or some who are lukewarm. They are neither busybody nor lazy. Boogie, boogie. They are neither hot nor cold. So those are the three set of people we have in every family. Number one, busy bodies. This workaholic. They work all the time. Even when others are praying, they are working. Two, some describe them as lazy people. While others are working, they may be sitting down watching television they may be sitting down, reading their novel, or reading, you know, browsing with their phone. Then, in between the workaholic and the lazy ones, we have the lukewarmers. They are neither cold nor hot. They are neither workaholics nor lazy. In between. So now, what I'm talking about is love in action. I want us to look at this now from the perspective of love in action. Jesus visited this family. Both of them wanted to do something to show Jesus that they love him. And they were, they had one thing in mind. They want to make Jesus feel at home. They want to show Jesus how much they love him, how much they, they care for him, how much they welcome him, how much they have received him in their home. For Mark, for Martha, she chose to demonstrate her own by looking for cola, cola not, busy in the kitchen, cooking food for Jesus Christ. That is what she has chosen. And it's love in action. Because if somebody comes to your home, you know, the, the, the best way is to offer that person cola. Even when the person is not hungry, when you offer the person cola, it's a sign of welcome. It's a sign of love. It's a sign. It's, in fact, the person will not feel at home. The person will not feel welcomed. The person will not feel loved. And that is what Martha was busy doing, preparing food, preparing cola for our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Mary, on the other hand, decided that, well, for me, oh, I love Jesus Christ. I cannot even afford leaving him for a second. I better stay at his foot, listening to him. That is the best way. At least keep him company. Keep him company, and that is the best thing. That's why I sang that song at the beginning. I said, only one thing matters. Only one thing matters. Only one thing matters to the Lord. Only one thing matters. Only one thing matters. Mary had chosen it. That 
That is the what God wants from us. Like this word of God that is going now, some people are making calls, calling, calling, you know, just to distract us. But only one thing matters. That ability to listen to the word of God. That ability to listen directly to Jesus Christ. Okay? That is the... You, you, Jesus have a lot to tell us. Jesus have a lot to share with us. But most of the time, we don't give him the audience. We don't want to listen to him. We, we are busy looking for what to do for him. We are busy looking for what to offer. We don't know that the best thing we can give to God is our attention. It's our attention. Most of the things, we, at times we pray, you know, look at most of the people I prayed for today. Most of them is as if they have their own club. After praying for them, they, they will not even say amen. They will take off another problem, another problem, another problem. They, they don't listen. People don't listen. People don't want to listen to God. Okay? Even when you tell them, oh yeah, hold it, listen. They, you know, the distraction is too much. The distraction is too much. Okay? You will end up looking for what to do for God. And we don't want God to talk to us. We don't want to listen to us. When you give people assignment that will help them develop their relationship with God, they want you to be the one praying for them. It's wrong. You know, love in action. Mary chose the best because that Jesus Christ need companionship. Nothing, in fact, eh? Jesus Christ. How do I describe this man? Which because most of us don't understand him. Most of us have refused to understand him. Jesus is that man. Eh? He and that's why when he was teaching us our day, our Lord's prayer. He would have even provided all that we need in one in a year at once. But because he needs our companion, he needs to, you know, that our friendship. He need, he, he need to be getting us closer to him almost on every day. You know, he decided to teach us, give us this day our daily bread. He wants to hear from us and he wants us to hear from him. Just think of somebody you have fallen in love. You have just fallen in love. And you truly love this person. Can a day pass without calling that person? That person you love. Imagine any day you did not hear the voice of your sweetheart. How will you feel? And Jesus Christ is taking you as his sweetheart. He's taking you as his, as his darling. He's taking you as his honey. He wants to be hearing from you all the time. And he wants you to hear from him. <clears throat> there are times you have to come to God in prayer. Don't just think of what to ask. Eh? Just stay there. Listen to him. Let him listen to you. Admire him. Let him admire you. That is the best form of prayer. And that is what we call adoration. And that is what we have not started emphasizing in this ministry. Because this ministry, look at the title of this ministry. Divine Mercy Eucharistic Adoration. That last letter there is what we have not taken our time to develop. We have not started adoring God. Adoration means admiring, deep admiration for God. You don't just come to God and just to bore God with your problem, just to bore God with your needs. At times, you just have to come to God to adore Him. You come to God, you come to the, hey, when I come into your presence, I'm so happy. In adoration and praise, we glorify your holy name. Into your sanctuary, we come to adore you, Lord. In adoration and praise, we glorify your holy name. Into your sanctuary, we come to adore you, Lord. That adoration, my dear, if you know how to adore God, there is nothing you ask him that he will not do. In fact, you will adore God to a level where you don't need to even ask. 
God will be the one asking you, my pick. You need it. I know you need this. He will give it to you. I was just sharing a testimony uh, a few minutes ago, telling you that I hardly beg. Not that I don't like begging. The reason why I don't beg is that God supplies all my needs. Anytime I am in an online program and I keep using burning credit, I don't pity, I don't pity for credit. Whenever people call me and their credit gets exhausted, their air tank gets exhausted, I will call them back immediately. And when, as soon as the credit uh, airtime is about to finish, this same God will inspire somebody to send me an airtime. You know, all this data I am burning on daily basis, daytime, midnight at night, you know, I have never come here for once and say, please do. I beg, they could not give me data. I beg, I don't have data to do tomorrow's program. Because even before I can even think of it, somebody has already sent me money. Okay? So that is it. When you adore God, when you are form this habit of adoring God, you will, in fact, you will not be the one asking God for what you need. God will supply all your needs. His riches. He will supply whatever you need. You don't even need to ask before God will do it for you. But if you come to God all the time, begging, asking Him, every time you are Luther twins, before you could even finish the first intention, you are presenting another one, and this one, and that one. You are boring God. You are boring God. You are making life bore. But admire God, praise Him, adore Him, stay with Him. Let us go to anywhere. Picture now. You, if I use the word blessed sacrament, you will tell me now that men of God they have locked the places of chapel. That chapel is under lock. Even if they lock it, get a picture of divine mercy. Okay, you can even put it as your uh, screen saver. Eh? Put, get a picture of divine mercy. Always look at him. Look at him. Focus on him. Look at him. Let him look at you. Admire him. He is the most handsome man on earth. Eh, admire him. He is your lover. Admire him. He is your honey, honey. Just admire him. He is your sweetheart. Is anything you can think of. Just from today, make sure you change your screensaver. Put the picture of uh, Divine Mercy, okay? In front of your pic. If you don't have any, we have to. At least so, yeah, anytime you go, so that even, because if, I will not tell you now not to be carrying phone, because all of you are addicted to phone. Uh, since you, you hardly see Christians carrying Bible. You hardly see them carrying Bible. But everybody is carrying phone. Well, instead of condemning it, why not put the picture of divine mercy as your screen server? So that when you look at it, who do you see? Jesus. Admire him. Just make sure that his picture, look at every time I am in this platform. You can't imagine me on air without the picture of divine mercy. Okay? I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. You are looking at him. He's looking at you. So admire him. Stay with him. And anywhere I travel to, I go with him. So please, what Mary did for today, Jesus said he, she has chosen the best. And nobody can take it away from her. Being at the foot of Christ. Listening to him. Admiring him. You know? Telling him story. Listening to his story. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is the best thing you can do. So, and Mary did it. But we are talking about love and action. Hey, Jesus Christ is one man that uh, I admire so much. In fact, I don't think I will be able to do what he does. Because Jesus Christ is one man that has time for everybody. 
Okay? And he's one man that doesn't even care what people are saying. He, love, they say, is blind. Love is blind. And in Jesus Christ, we see truly that love is blind. Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ falls in love with you, he doesn't care what people are saying. You remember the story of that uh, woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, you know, when Jesus Christ was uh, chatting with her at the well. The disciples came, they were like surprised. How can a whole prophet be chatting with a woman alone in the well, in this quiet place, in this place? Place and nobody, only himself and the woman. They were only God knows what they were taking, but Jesus doesn't care. And as the Bible even said, He said, None of them dare ask Him, What were you discussing with this woman? Never mind them. Mm -hmm. That is Jesus for you. He doesn't listen to gossip. And today, he decided to visit his girlfriends, Mary and Martha. He has visited his... He don't, he, he, he's there, he's there, he has gone to visit his girlfriend, Mary and Martha. But he doesn't care. And when he went there, he relaxed. That is one place that Jesus Christ just relaxed. He was not in a hurry. He's not like these other reverend fathers like Father John Dinger, who we call, hey, yeah, yeah, my name is Oh, yeah, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I'm in a hurry. I have busy shit to do, busy shit to do, you know? But when Jesus comes to your house, he will relax. He was not the one complaining. He was not the one in a hurry. It was even matter. Mata was the one complaining. He said, Mata, 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 Kuda. Eh? There is only one thing that matters so. And Mary, your younger sister, has chosen it. I did not come here to eat food. Do I look like a hungry man? I want companionship. I have come to, you know, I don't know what you people call it. Titi. Love in action. You know, at times you need no stress. Jesus, I love that. He just come to ease off stress. Just came to their house and then discuss, you know, in a natural way. You must not follow the protocol. Whatever people are doing, you are doing. Because every visitor that comes to your house, you are looking for food. What Jesus need at this time around was not your food. He need that attention. He need that time. He need that love. That is what he need. Love. He for Nanya. He and Mary understood it well. Mary stood by his side. You know? And Jesus told Martha, Martha, in a bola jata jata jata. All this jata jata jata. It also it is it, not why I'm here. I don't need your food. I need your people. Come and sit down and talk to me. Eh? Come and sit down. Eh? So that is it. Love in action. Jesus is a man that when he knows, whatever he knows, he goes for it. Irrespective of what people are taking of him. Irrespective of what people are saying about him. When he love you, he love you for real. Okay? And that's why when he visited these people, he did not just come there to, you know, he just came and relaxed. He just felt at home. You know, felt at home. And today Jesus is visiting your family. When he comes, he's going to relax. He's going to relax. He will not be in a hurry. You know, he will admire you. And you will admire him. Okay? So that is Jesus for you. When he comes, he's not in a hurry. And he's not even coming to eat your food. He just is coming for you. Jesus is coming for you.
because he loves you. He, lo he has fallen in love with you. Jesus has fallen in love with you. Everything about you gives him joy. Your voice gives him joy. Your story, in fact, that laughter, that laughter, you know, there is a way you'll be so close to somebody and then you will talk and the person will laugh. You, The person will talk and you will laugh. That at times you need it. It's not every time you are you are over serious. You're over serious. Jesus is not that kind of a person. He's a man of the people. He's a man who truly loves. He's a man who knows how to make you feel at home. He's a man who can, you know, break protocol. So many people are waiting for him. Oh. Thousands of people are waiting for him. Oh. His disciple, and he didn't go with them. That is the aspect of Jesus I love. Where we are the 12 apostles in this story? Where we are the 12 apostles in this story? He goes to them anywhere he's going. But when he wanted to visit his girlfriend, nah, the same thing he did when he met that Samaritan woman at the well. He gave them money. Oh, yeah, you people should go to market, go and buy something. <laughs> As they were going, he now sat down with the woman. Freely. No interference. You know, just a relax. You know, the same thing applicable when Jesus Christ came to Mary and Martha. He must have sent them to Nkogu. <laughs> he must have sent the, the apostles to <laughs> Aforu. <laughs> oh, yeah, you will go. Let me go and cool my head. He now went to Mary and Martha. He relaxed there. Yeah? And then he wanted to, you know, Want to hear a soft voice, cool voice, lovely voice, you know, sentimental voice. But every time you are hearing masculine voice, gang, 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 gang. You know, say now cool on it down. Let me go and hear a different voice. He now visited his girlfriends and then sat down, relaxed. So one was preparing food, the other one was, you know, just there for him. You know, that is Jesus for you. And today, Jesus has fallen in love with you. He is coming to visit you. You will see what will happen when he comes. When he comes, he will give you all the times. He will give you all the time. You, whatever you want to talk with him, you will talk. Not this one. Father will tell you, my friend, I don't need your story. Ah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me what you want. No, Jesus is not like that. Jesus is not like this, Father John Dana, who is always in a hurry. You know, he will even when you are talking nonsense, he will listen to you. Even when 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 you are talking out of point, he will listen to you. Okay, he's not in a hurry. When he comes to your house, he is there for you. Okay, so that is exactly what happened. Saint Martha, we are celebrating the feast of Saint Martha today, and the, today, oh, you see love in action. Not just talking about love. But Jesus Christ put it in action. And the people he visited, they also expressed their own love in action. Whether you talk about Mary, who was there with him, keeping him company. Or you talk about Martha, who have to be running around, what will I give to my master? Hey, what will I offer him? All these are expression of love. And that's why I call it love in action. What have you offered to Jesus? Or if Jesus should come to your house today, what will you offer to him? Father, you are a good listener. You don't be in a hurry. Really? <laughs> you don't understand, Father, then. Father, that will, you will call on phone and you want to narrate your story. And Father will say, no, no, I'm not, I'm not interested in your problem. You tell me, I'm only interested in your solution. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, yeah, next person. Bam. And there is a way you will be dragging, dragging, dragging. Boom. You will put off your phone. Connect to another person. That is Father John Damien, because he's always he's limited. I can't be as patient as Jesus. I don't think anybody can be as patient as Jesus. Jesus is a man with difference. Jesus is a lover with a difference. 
Okay? His own love for you is not pretentious. He doesn't pretend. And as I say, he doesn't care what people are saying. He doesn't even mind. Let them say whatever they say. Is it not talk? Let them talk. They, all they could say, eh, he has visited those girls. Uh -huh. A whole prophet visiting girls in girls' female apartment. <laughs> what is he doing in female apartment? Imagine the apostles watching him coming out of the house of Mary and Martha. Hey, <laughs> Eh? Last time we met him at the well, talking with a woman alone at the well. And today now, he's coming out from female apartment. Eh? Female apartment. Maybe a matter for that matter. But he doesn't care. He does not care. When Jesus has fallen in love with you, he uses cutting wood to block mm. his ear against whatever mm. people are saying against mm. his lovers. He loves you see, with an everlasting love. Mm. He cares for you, O oh Lord. I will sing mm. forever of your love with an everlasting love. He loves you so much. He, he look at him inviting you. In fact, when, when you don't want to even visit him, he will invite you and say, please now, come to me. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah? He said, come to me. Come to me. I am here. In fact, there was one he has to say in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. He said, behold, I stand at the door. I keep knocking. I keep knocking. If you open your door, I will come. I will eat with you. I will celebrate with you. I will dine with you. I will give you a hug. That is Jesus for you. A man of the people. A man who loves you so much. A man who wants to spend the rest of his life. He said, I am with you always until the end of time. I will not leave you offense. Love in action. Love in action. And then like, the first reading today says it all. To sum it up, to contextualize it, listen to the first reading. Okay? First reading happens to be taken from First John chapter 4, 7 to 16. First John chapter 4, 7 to 15. That's today's first reading. Okay? Now, beloved, let us love one another. Let us love one another. Oh, for love is of God. Hey? Yeah? To put it in a context. That's why I say this is love in action. Oh. And today, not just Jesus loving Martha. Not just Jesus loving Mary. But today, St. John said, Beloved, let us love one another. Eh? For love is of God. Love, this love is of God. This love comes from God. He said, love is of God. And he who loves is born of God. Okay? And he knows God. He who does not love does not know God. If he doesn't love, if you don't have love, <laughs> you don't know anything about God. You are, and you are not of God. You must love for you to be of God. Okay? For God is love. The essence of God is love. God is love. Hey! In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to, to be an expression for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We have to, we have no option. We must love one another. No man has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected. By this we know and we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his own spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son as the Savior of the world. Hey, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we know and we believe the love God has for us. We know and we believe in the love God has for us. God is love. 
God is love. He who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. He who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. There is no other thing that shows you are a child of God. Okay? Unconditional love from Jesus. You see, they don't, they don't define it. Guilty conscience. This one now, they talk of unconditional love. You know? Unconditional love. Love is love. It is your head that is distorting love. Love is love. You know? Devil knew that this is the only force we can use to pull the forces of hatred, violence in the world. And that's why he decided to distort it. People are now afraid of love. The moment he tells somebody now, I love you, he said, what do you mean by love? People are afraid to hear love. Hey, sister, I love you. Uh -huh. Love or what? Love or what? What do you mean by love? So many young women are not married today because of their fear of love. Who knows whether he really mean it? And inside you, you are dying. You need love. Every human being needs love. But pretense has killed most of you. Instead of you to, you know, it is natural. It is natural. If there is anything you need to survive, it is love. Because you are created in God's image and likeness. If God is love, you yourself, you are equally love. You cannot survive without love. Okay? And because devil knew what we can do with love, that is why he decided to distort the term. They can use it. Any 